is a wonderful talk on innovation is the future, the key to innovate and upgrade your customer experience. This talk will be delivered by Senior Director, India Customer Care, GoDaddy, who is a seasonal, sorry, seasoned professional with two decades of experience in managing service delivery and customer experience in areas as diverse as banking, BPO, credit cards, telecom, and technology. Please help me welcome Mr. Rohit Makija. Big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Back to follow after what's happened in the first half of the day. That too, especially after lunch. And half the room is uh, vacant uh, and the bellies are full. Uh, try and stay awake. I'll try and uh, do some justice to this session. Thanks, Swati. So the session that's been given to me is innovation is the future. It indeed is. Uh, but you know, as we discuss about the term innovation, or as our teams discuss about it in our offices, in our organization, uh, what are the kind of reactions? What is the kind of resistance that we face? What is it that we see? If any of the upcoming snippets resonate with you, I'd love to see a show of hands. Just simple uh, snippets before we get to the details of how to go about executing it. So companies want to be bold and innovative. They want to be innovative because probably that is what the entire world is doing. But they want to do things exactly the same way as they've been done before. Once again, the same challenge, right? There is a buy-in, but the issue is it's not been done before. I don't see show of hands. Probably there are more evolved companies here. A typical corporate cycle that a lot of us see, right? There is no dearth of ideas that are getting generated on the ground, but almost at the same pace, we are able to kill the ideas. Just because effectively as CX leader, we don't have a mechanism of inviting these in taking them through an experimentation framework and funnel the best ones in. Well, there is never a bad time to innovate, even this one. Thanks, guys. I don't know if this is even possible. Can we go through this? Yes to innovation and no to change. I don't know if that's a possibility. Once again, same thing, right? You would fail, right? We've, we've tried, uh, but it didn't work out. Thanks for the show of hands, guys. Uh, let's get to uh, uh, today's discussion. This is the simple dictionary definition of innovation, right? As simple as that. Any new idea or a new method could lead to innovation. Since today's subject is about touching upon innovation with respect to customer experience, I think it is best we can take probably a minute to just call out what is the key difference between customer care and customer experience. Much of the talk that we've heard in the first half of the day while we've been speaking of customer experience touches quite elaborately on the aspects of customer care, right? Or contact center in our traditional parlance. The way I look at customer care, probably for the sake of uh, oversimplifying it for the sake of this discussion, uh, it is an event-based thing. Customer needs something, and customer care team or customer service team responds to that. It is a specific event, customer wants help purchasing something, and customer care team responds to that. There is tons of innovation that has happened here. We won't spend too much time, but if you see on the left-hand side, uh, this is an image which would be familiar to many, right? We've all spent, as customers as well, long, uh, you know, time on long hold, listening to jarring music. There have been email channels not as effective. I'm not saying, I'm not against email channels itself, but not many brands manage it very well. Uh, there are traditional chat channels, and then again, brands having to hire multiple different languages uh, to serve you. Uh, go forward a few years, a lot of us have led this kind of a transformation, a lot of us have been a part of it, and a lot of us have observed it as customers of various different brands, right? The good thing right in the center of the right-hand side is customer is right in the middle of it. Customers have led this transformation. Simple, basic innovations. Now there is a wait time that we can announce to the customers. Customers know how long will they have to wait for. We can also play informational messages to them. We are present in asynchronous channel, uh, uh, channels like uh, uh, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger. We use it quite successfully at scale at GoDaddy as well. Being respectful again of customer's time at the same time being uh, you know judicious about your own resources and time, request a callback. Simple but phenomenal innovation. I'm sure a lot of brands sitting here service their customers through the social uh, response management. 
Last one is really the only channel experience. I don't know whether many brands are there yet. But my simple method of looking at, once again, the omnichannel experience, the cost of repeating what we said in the morning, is all the channels that you use today to provide to your customers should be able to interact with each other almost on a real-time basis, right? But that is a journey that we are on quite successfully. Go forward in terms of customer experience. This is as simply just showing up for the customer with ease, consistency, and simplicity. Another way to look at and sort of draw a distinction between customer care and customer experience. Customer experience is a more elaborate subject. Here is a simple, nice infographic uh, that I could find. It starts off even before a customer is a customer of your brand, right? When customer is looking at the options where to purchase from, what product to buy, they are evaluating various different companies. They are seeking quotations. They are doing price comparisons to an actual purchase event which is happening. Uh, there is an activation of the product. There is then an eventual usage of the product and thereby then customers come back to you to buy the next product, right? <clears throat> Before we get to how do we go about innovation and what are the trends that are happening in the industry, let's look at what are the three key reasons why we need to innovate. Firstly, again, no-brainer, to stay competitive. In today's world, it is no longer a matter of choice, right? Uh, it is a must-do. It is no longer a need to do. It is no longer, uh, you know, uh, something which is a discretion uh, in the hands of the businesses. Fosters growth, this is the only thing that will keep us relevant, that will keep us uh, on the edge. This is the only thing that will propel uh, brands to success uh, if uh, uh, we innovate. Lastly, adaptability and resilience. As I was reflecting on this point, you know, I want to stay consciously away from talking about COVID-19, hoping that chapter is over, dead forever. But uh, the reality is that is the most recent chapter that comes to mind every time we speak of adaptability and resilience. Uh, in the last two and a half years, I'm sure a lot of us have seen the, uh, the customers have evolved, right? Technology has evolved. Digital transformation has evolved. So much so that our workplaces have evolved. I'm sure a lot of you sitting in this room are not necessarily working from uh, office every day. Either there is a hybrid or you're still working from home, which is a new reality, which is nothing but innovation. Well, how do you go about innovating? This is one option. It doesn't exist with many of us. You can't be hiring furious cats. Uh, so we'll have to do something uh, which uh, will rely on human beings. I'll talk about a simple two-step process on how to go about innovation. Step one is observation, right? It is a simple uh, thing to seek what uh, matters to your customer. What is the value that you can add to your customer? A first simple sub-step sub within observation is mimicry, or what we also call as biomimicry. One of the good examples of that is an apple falling from a tree really inspired Sir Isaac Newton to discover laws of gravitational forces, right? This is an observation. Uh, what you see on the bottom left is a burr. Many of you would have experienced in parks, in forests, there are small things that stick onto your shoes to various different types of clothing. This is what led a Swedish engineer to discover Velcro. This was the source of it. The other category is look at how customers are using your product. Don't just be internal focused as to what have we made the product for, but see what is that customers are truly using it for. One of the classic examples is 7up. I don't know how many of uh, us know here, 7up was originally launched in the market as a hangover remedy. But eventually it found its space uh, in the cola segment just because customers are loving the taste and flavor of it. Kleenex, one of the world's largest sold tissues, was initially made and sold for the purpose of a makeup remover. Eventually it got changed because that is how customers were using and loving it. Borrow ideas from the environment. Now what you see here, it is, it's an assembly line of a slaughterhouse in Chicago uh, back in 1913. This became an inspiration for Henry Ford to start off the first automobiles in an assembly line format which continues to exist till date for all automobile companies. Step two is co-creation, right? This is where you use your actual customers as a consultant to drive value. The way I define this, it is uh, you dream the product with the customer, you design the product with the customer, and then you develop the product with the customer. Dream, design, develop, if you want to just understand this step very simply. There are multiple sources of customer information we've been discussing since morning, right? There are hundreds and thousands of transactions, 
There are customer interactions that we handle on an everyday basis. How do you synthesize all of that information and draw learnings out of it? The other big bucket is NPS and CSAT surveys. A lot of us do these surveys, but what is the learning out of it and how can we make it usable? The third segment is customer escalation. There are customers who are complaining day in, day out because there are things that, that are bound to go wrong. What is the learning that you draw out of it? Besides all of these as well, there are some structured channels that you can create uh, to draw customer expertise, which are, uh, you know, which is what you see on the screen. There are customer councils, there are customer focus groups that you can do uh, with your customer for any specific product intervention uh, that you want to design. Well, one of the examples I had spoken of, so I'll talk about the other one. Domainer is the example that I had spoken of during the uh, previous uh, discussion. What you see on the left hand side is an online forum for Ducati. Right? It is a very effective forum to the extent, while it is an online forum, it comes offline a few times. It is sort of a fan club, which is one of the largest sources of information for the R&D team of Ducati. It not only provides information for the design and color kind of elements, but also for the engineering and technical stuff. Well, there are some of the emerging trends that I wanted to quickly uh, touch upon. Number one that we term as artificial uh, serendipity. Who doesn't like happy surprises? Why don't we just go ahead and surprise our customers the best that we can? One of the good examples that I see here is the Netflix shuffle button, right? You outsource the problem of what to watch also to Netflix. It is an AI based engine which looks at what have you watched in the past. It is also looking at what our customers like you watching. And also at the same time, what is the latest added title on the Netflix platform in the area where you're watching? Hundreds of such attributes and it is served to you on a platter. Shared interest. I think uh, in the times to come, there is going to be a change of equation as to how we view loyalty. I know many of you and some of these brands run loyalty programs. Uh, for long, this has been skewed in favor of uh, the brand the way I see it. I think time has come that we stop to question the customer as to how loyal the customer is and whether the customer is loyal enough that we reward him or her. And we turn it around to say how loyal are we as a brand towards the customer and are we loyal enough that customers will now come back and reward us. Frequent fire programs of airlines uh, are my typical example when I talk about this. If you think of any gold platinum member sitting in this room and think back on your journey who's gained more in this relationship, whether it is you or the brand. I think just a simple point of reflection. Partner in life, I think there is enough that we do around customer journey. There is nothing wrong in that, but there is a need for us to evolve, go a level further to connect with customers at their life level. What is it that we can do to impact them on things that matter to them? One of the good examples that I came across, uh, this is uh, in Netherlands, an insurance company called Central Beheer. This is a company that does an event called Small Dent Days, a few times in an year. If you think of the cars that you buy, uh, when you get a first dent on your car, typical reality across the globe and India is no exception, we don't take it to a mechanic, we don't take it to an insurance service provider. Because it's a small dent, the, it is uh, you know, too painful to spend money and resources on it. Reality is after a few months, you would have a few more dents on the car and you would have not done anything about it. This is a company which does this event wherein they invite you, they will fix the dents at no cost for all their customers. They, it is almost a festival of sorts. There is a band playing, there is food for customers to eat and the employees will engage with the customers effectively. Just a simple innovation. Love your frustrated customers and we've, we've seen a lot of stats in the morning uh, as well. Some part of it is quite similar. One out of 26 customers will come back and show you the frustration. What also, uh, you know, is implied here is that 25 out of 26 customers are not coming back to you and they are not showing the frustration to you, which means they keep their frustration with themselves or they are expressing the frustration to other friends of theirs or to existing customers of yours. Another reality is that one third of the customers would leave you after a really bad experience. Combine the two, this one out of 26 is really a gold mine of information. Instead of hating these customers for sharing this feedback, we need to wrap our arms around them to learn every bit of information, every piece of insight that we can. In the times to come, there is going to be a zero tolerance for the digital inconvenience. There is going to be a zero tolerance for the digital incompetence of brands. And it is a reality. If you think of it now, that even if you think these are much stronger words, think of how long are you willing to give 
to an app that you've downloaded from a Play Store or an App Store uh, for it to work? How many seconds are you willing to wait today for a web page to load? Well, this is the only thing which guarantees failure, which is not to try. We are almost towards the end of this. Uh, three key takeaways from uh, my standpoint. One is going back to the first dictionary definition. Invariably, innovation involves anything which is new. A new idea, a new method, a new way of doing things. It is always about improvement. It is improvement upon something that we've been doing. And the last one, there is no stage that we can say, now we've innovated. We are home. It is a continuous iterative process which will keep evolving. What you see on the right hand side is equally important. Customers need to be at the heart of this innovation. Otherwise, uh, there is no meaning of it. Having said that, despite our best efforts, things will not always work right. There are things which are bound to go wrong, and this could be the result. But we don't have to worry. Well, with that, before even the first bell rings, I'm at the end of it. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs>